All right, good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Jeannie Schaap and I'm the administrator of the Wisconsin Science of Reading Literacy Task Force Facebook page. Um, I'm excited um, to present to you opinion writing by, uh, for primary grades by Nancy Fetzer. Um, thank you all of you for being here tonight. I know uh, energy is waning, it's springtime, we're tired. And so you're showing up here tonight. You're gonna have a great hour of understanding how to teach opinion writing. Um, and this will be, it's recorded. We will make sure that it's um, out on our website so you can view um, later. Uh, if you did not get the printouts, they're available on the files tab on the Wisconsin Science of Reading Facebook page, as well as the International SOAR page. So you can get those handouts there. Um, if you pop in, make sure you're muted and um, we'll get ready to roll. If you have any questions, put them in a the chat box and we'll be sure to answer them um, at the end of the hour. So um, I'm presenting to you Nancy. She's an award-winning teacher who has authored and illustrated many books and manuals and videos. After years of research and application refinement, Nancy has crafted school-wide methods and strategies that dovetail any adoption or framework. She provides the how-to methods for curriculum implementation in today's diverse classrooms. Um, this is not a scripted program, but a unique process that guides all students to read, write, listen, and speak with high levels of proficiency. So take it away, Nancy. Wonderful. Well, good evening, everyone, and I agree. Um, it's March right now, so it's pretty impressive that you're here because I know this is the time of year when you're looking at your number of days and going, oh, I can make it, I can make it. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to focus on opinion writing. And if you were with me last time, um, we went through direct instruction steps to show informational writing. And tonight we're going to do opinion. But tonight I thought I would change it up a little bit and I would add um, a few video clips as I go along so that you could see what it's like in the classroom. Just want to give you a heads up. The video that I'm going to be doing is from a summer school classroom, first graders going into second grade. And um, this was just, I was at a school training and I walked in the classroom and did the lesson with them. And these were kids asked to come to summer school because they needed some extra help uh, with reading and writing. Okay, and I thought that would be a great group for everyone to see so that you could see what do you do when you have kids having a little bit of difficult time with the writing process. So let's go ahead and get started. And my whole um, process that how I teach writing is called plan, talk and write. And basically what that is, is that we're going to plan what we're writing. And in this case, we're going to be doing opinion writing. So we need to organize our writing. Whenever you're writing, you always start off with structure. So we're going to learn a chant in order to identify the structure of our opinion in the primary grades. And then once we know what that structure is, then we're going to follow steps, direct explicit instruction steps that are metacognitive steps. So that when you learn this metacognition, you can write any opinion. And when you follow those steps, you're going to use a blank piece of paper, eight and a half by 14, I suggest. So just get reams of the legal size blank paper. And you're going to be filling it in with your ideas that are represented by icons and keywords. So that's the planning piece. And then this is probably the most important part of what I ever do. And that is, if you can say it, then you can write it. It's the oral rehearsal, taking the ideas from the organizer, orally rehearsing them so that you can play, um, you can develop well, so that you can construct well-developed sentences. And then when you have that ability to say, and in this case, your paragraph, then you need to transcribe it. So transcription is the, is the handwriting skills, spelling, capitalization, punctuation, even indentation, where you're able to put it down on paper. So if you have kids who don't have the ability to write, like today, if I'm a kindergarten teacher, I could do this activity, but it ends up becoming an oral language activity because we're using a lot of language, many sentences, um, uh, much more complex vocabulary, so that later when they actually can get the words, transcribe them down on the page, 
they have the ability to, tr they have um, more well-developed writing. So you want to always look at writing as I'm planning and developing writing, and then I'm developing my transcription skills. So typically that's done through dictation, your spelling, um, and, and getting the kids honed in so they can write those sentences and finally get to the point where they can write these paragraphs. So let's go ahead and talk about when we're planning a narrative information or opinion writing. Um, I have chance to identify the parts of all three types of writing, because again, if you're going to write these types of text, you have to know what the structure is when you start writing it. You have to know what's there. So we're going to go through all three just so that you can kind of have an understanding of what I'm talking about. All three types of writing have something at the beginning, something in the middle, and something at the end. So the narrative at the beginning is going to be called the story opening. So up at the top of the narrative, I'm going to put a straight line across, and that's going to be where I plan my story opening. And I'm going to have a secret formula for that. So all of my paragraphs start with a secret formula, have something in the middle and end with a secret formula. So that's going to be SC arrow, which is setting, when and where is the story happening or time and place, character, who is doing the action, and then arrow is action. What was the character doing? And notice I asked, what was the character doing in the questioning technique? So that kids, when they answer it, they have past tense because stories are written in past tense. So their verb is already going to be formed that way. Let's go to the informative explanatory. And it starts off with topic sentence. That's the main idea. So that is how we're starting our first sentence in our informative explanatory. And that is called the topic sentence. And again, that's going to have a secret formula. And if you were with me last time, you will already know this, and that is SS light bulb. The first dash S is optional. You don't always need this information, but that's setting, just like at the story, um, time and place. The second S is subject, which is who or what is the information about. Notice I'm in present tense because often um, information is written in present tense. And then the light bulb is what's the main idea? What information are you telling about? And then whatever the subject is. When we have the opinion, that's gonna start with the opinion statement. So that's going to be, I have an opinion. So our opinion statement is going to start and that secret formula is T-S-O. Transition, so we're transitioning into that opinion. So I believe, I think, in my opinion, um, subject, who or what is your opinion about? And then the opinion is, what do you think? The O is for opinion. What do you think or feel about the subject? And then we're going to end this phrase with, for many reasons. So now we go to the middle of all three types of writing. So we have our story opening, then actions, 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 where you do, say, or think. So now in the middle of our story, we can have action boxes. And we don't know how many action boxes there are. That's going to happen as we plan our story. But those are going to be actions where we're going to have characters do. So that's just where they have an action. Say, so that's dialogue. Or think, and that's thoughts. Many times we look at these as actions. And then when you have your dialogue and thoughts, that's considered a reaction because one of the best way reactions, that's one of the best ways to write dialogue that's meaningful or thoughts that are meaningful is for your dialogue to be about what just happened, what actions happened. So that way they're actually saying something about what's occurring in the story. It makes much more meaningful dialogue. Let's go to the informative explanatory. Topic sentence, that's the main idea. Now I need details, details, details. That's information all about the main idea. So in the middle are details. And again, we don't know how many details. It depends on the main idea. But those details, when we're first learning how to write information, either go in order or no order, which means that these are the foundational um, types of uh, structures for informational text, which is sequencing, 
or categories. And sequencing can be temporal, time, or ordinal, just order. Okay, let's go to the opinion. I have an opinion. Now I need a reason and a reason and a reason to back up that opinion. So now we're going to have three reasons to back up our opinion. So we have reason one, two, three. And that reason, as they get older, those reasons we start calling evidence. And tonight you're gonna to see that we all, not only wanna have reasons, but we want to expand on the reasons. So when you expand on reasons, you either tell more why or how that reason supports your opinion. All right, let's end everything. So story opening, then actions, 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 where you do say or think, then the story's done. So now we have the stories done or story closing. And that secret formula is T S, oops, sorry, T C R. Transition, character, who or who is the story mostly about? And then R is reflection. The character is going to reflect back on what he or she did in the story and tell you what they learned, how they felt, what they wished to have a reflection. All right, let's do the informative explanatory. Topic sentence, that's the main idea. Now I need details, details, details. That's information about the main idea. Conclusion, repeat that main idea, but use different words. So we have our conclusion. And the secret formula there is T-S light bulb. So we're gonna transition into the conclusion Repeat our subject. If you can say the subject in different words, great. If it sounds awkward, don't worry about it. But the light bulb, the main idea, you want to try to reword differently. Okay. And then let's go back down to the opinion. I have an opinion. Now I need a reason and a reason and a reason to back up my opinion. Conclusion, repeat that opinion, but use different words. So now we're going to go to our um, conclusion. And that is T-S-O, same secret formula as the beginning, transition, subject, or what is my opinion about, opinion, what do you think or feel? And can you reword your opinion in different words? Okay, so those are the chants. So they identify the different parts of the writing and kids can easily make these um, organizers on plain paper, which is great so that they don't rely on us to Xerox anything off. Now, I just wanted to show you, I love to make bulletin boards to make them interactive um, when I was teaching in the classroom. So I would make a whole writing wall and I could have my definition up here of what an opinion is. I could have my chant here. So for all my different types of writing, I could have a spot here for definition and I could put, I could laminate this, put holes in it so that this wall could be a wall for opinion, informative explanatory, and narrative writing. I just would switch the definition when I'm writing whatever type of writing. Same thing with the chant. I would put up the narrative chant if I was doing narrative. Right now I have up the opinion because we're doing opinion. I would then have an area posted with the steps. So these are the direct instruction steps. And when you notice, what would we say for opinion? I have an opinion and I need a reason, reason, reason to back up my opinion. Conclusion, repeat that opinion, but use different words. So that chant is actually step one in your directions. Step two is the reasons, reasons, reason, and the conclusion is step three. And step four is going to be your editing. So when we're looking at the chant, it not only tells you what the different parts are, but it's also immediately teaching kids what the steps are. Then up on your board, Next to that, you would have a big piece of blank paper so that you could be making the organizer while the kids make it. And at first, you may just have them on the carpet or sitting in their seats and you only make the organizer. And they do walk through the steps, help you answer questions. You're filling in the organizer. As time goes by and they've seen you do a couple of these, then what happens is, is they get an organizer and they do the organizer with you, then eventually you start just doing one part of the organizer. 
And then they might work in partners and complete it so that you're gradually releasing responsibility until finally they can do it on their own. This shows um, an opinion where we actually wrote the title of a story along with the opinion part, kind of like a book report. Okay, so you can add things, have a lot of variety. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started in our lesson. So whenever I teach anything when it comes to, and in this case, writing, um, I always like to start off with a, a definition. So I say to the kids, boys and girls, we're going to be learning we're going to be learning opinion writing. So please ask me, what is an opinion? So they go, what is an opinion? Thank you for asking. An opinion is what I think or how I feel. So then I make like a heart about something I've read or about anything in the world. So if you look at your standards, an opinion is a, is a, is a judgment about a topic or a text. So a topic is anything in the world and a text is what you read. So I tried to put it in um, and a judgment is what you think or feel. So I tried to put it in kid language. So again, an opinion is what I think or how I feel. So I make a heart about something I've read or about anything in the world. Now, one of the things that I like to do is I always like to write opinions about what my focus text was for my, in my English language arts because every week I always have at least one text that's a focus text that we're reading. And it's going to jump from narrative to opinion. I mean, narrative to informational text. So I could have opinions about something and information. I could have opinions about a story that we've read. And I do it usually every Friday. I, every Friday I used to do an opinion. So it was always there. And at the beginning of the year, I did a lot of the recording on the organizers and the kids just said an oral opinion. And then eventually, like I said, they started doing organizers, writing it out. And then finally, they, I started releasing more and more where they did it on their own. So let's say that we have read this as our focus text for the week, the story Julius. And if you don't know the story Julius, I highly recommend that you read this story to your kids. It is a delightful story. It is really fun. The kids love it. And it's about this little girl named Maya, and she has this wacky grandfather, uh, and he sent her, he brought her a present for her birthday in a big crate, and it was this crazy, wacky pig named Julius. And Julius ended up doing all kinds of naughty things in the story. He was just out of control. And Maya adored him, but her parents weren't very thrilled with, with um, Julius. And they finally said, that's it, that pig has to go. And then the rest of the story was her teaching him good manners. So notice half the story is packed with evidence that he has bad manners and half the story is packed with where he ends up having good manners. So I could end up having two opinions that I could write for Julius. This one was, do you think Julius has bad manners? And notice I'm putting it in the present tense because opinions are typically written in the present tense because it's what you think is true. So we have, do you think Julius has bad manners? And the kids agreed, yes, in the story, he has bad manners. All right, so we're agreeing on that and now we're going to write an opinion. Now on the left page, once we decide on our opinion that we are going to agree that Julius ha has bad manners, then we say, okay, in order to write an opinion, I need to know the parts of opinion. So the first part is I have an opinion, then we need a reason, a reason, and a reason to back up our opinion, and then a conclusion, repeat that opinion, but use different words. Now on the facing page is just for you to have as an added glance sheet of how, uh, for you, for when you're teaching kind of what all the different parts are, the, the, questions that, the questions that you need to ask. This is not for kids, this is for you. It's your little at a glance teaching sheet. I'm going to now go to what the kids are going to see. So what the kids are going to see is a blank piece of paper and our steps. So our first step, when we said, does Julius have manners? Yes, um, bad manners, yes, he does. Then we are ready to write an opinion. So step one, what is that going to be? I have an opinion. Secret formula time. So we're going to go up to our paper and at the top of our paper, we're going to write this secret formula right here, T-S-O. So right here, T-S-O. And notice that's the step and this is a little helper chart here 
to remind us and give us help to fill in our TSO. The first T is for transition. So transition are special words that begin a sentence. So we have, in my opinion, I think I feel, and you can add to these boxes. There's many different ways that you can start an opinion. I just put a few there when kids are first starting to write it. So I guess I'm gonna use in my opinion. All right, next I have, and I see my little comma there, so I'm gonna put that on my organizer. Next, I need to go to the S, the subject. So notice the questions are down here because so much about writing is about questioning. So now we're going to look at the S and say subject, who or what is your opinion about? Julius. I could draw Julius or write Julius as long as it's whichever one is the fastest for me to do. I think I'm going to write Julius. Okay, now I'm going to go to the O, opinion. What do we think or feel about Julius? Oh, he has bad manners. So I'm just going to write bad manners here. And then my helper chart is showing me in this box that I can end this um, uh, opinion statement with a nice little phrase for many reasons, and it makes it end smoothly. So we're going to write that there. Now we put our line across and we read our opinion. In my opinion, Julius has bad manners for many reasons. All right, so now we have our secret formula for our opinion statement. And we're gonna go into the body where we're going to have to come up with our reasons, reasons, reasons to back up our opinion. Now, at this point, I always tell the kids before we start that part, because I'm gonna take you to a video in a second, is boys and girls, I'm holding up this book right now and we've already read it. And I'm gonna tell you right now that I think Julius has bad manners. Now, you're much older now. You're not little kids anymore, you're older. So. Put your hand out like this. Put your other hand like, out like this. When I say Julius has bad manners, I want you to go like this. Back it up, back it up, back it up. Yeah, I need a reason, reason, reason to back up that he has bad manners. Okay, okay. So I can't just say he has bad manners. I have to back it up. I have to go where? Into the book and find places where he has bad manners. So let's go ahead and let's see this with another story that kids had been reading. And this was our summer school class that I was telling you about. So this is a group of kids. I'd never seen them before. I went in and did this lesson. So this is the first time they did it. And they were in summer school. And um, uh, they, were, they had already read, so it was their focus text for the week, Thunder Cake. So we're gonna go ahead and let me put that video on right now. So you can see the introduction to this lesson all the way to writing the opinion. An opinion is what I think or how I feel about what I've read or anything in the world. We're going to have an opinion about the book Thunder Cake. You read the book, correct? Yeah. Twice. Yeah, twice. I love it. Here we go, my friends. So we're going to have an opinion about Thunder Cake. So everyone go, I have an opinion about Thunder Cake. I have an opinion about Thunder Cake. What in Thunder Cake are we going to have an opinion about? The book or the little girl? And what do we think? The little girl is what? A scary cat. Okay, now, I want everybody to sit up tall and be a college student right now. Are we ready? Watch me. I'm going to be, you're my college student professors. Ready? I have an opinion about Thunder Cake. I think the little girl is a scaredy cat. Do you want to know what they do in college? Put your hands out like this. Everyone look at me and go, back it up, back it up, back, back it up. up. Give it to me. Ready? Go. Back it up, back it up, back it up. Okay, okay. So I can't just say, oh, I think she's a scaredy cat, and then walk away? What do I have to do, everybody? Give it to me. Back it up, back it up, back it up. Okay, so let's stand up for a minute, and let's find out what's an opinion then. 
Everyone go, I have an opinion. I have an opinion. And I need reasons, reasons, reasons to back up my opinion. Now watch this part. Ready? Go. Conclusion. Conclusion. Repeat that opinion. Repeat that opinion. Now look at the conclusion and say, but use different words. But use different words. All right, take a seat. I'm going to put a line here. And over here, I need to have my opinion. My opinion. And then after I give my opinion, I need a reason. Reason. Number one. What do you think this is going to be? Reason number two. Reason number two. Reason number three. What's the C for? Conclusion. Everyone say step one opinion. Step one opinion. This is going to make a sentence, and there's three parts to the opinion sentence. Are we ready? In my opinion. Now we're going to go to the second line. Everyone go like this. Say, who or what is the opinion about? Who or what is the opinion about? Who do we decide we were going to have an opinion about in this book? The little girl. The little girl. Now, I'm writing notes right now. I'm not writing my paper yet. So I can draw quick pictures or words. This, the little girl. Just like that. Because am I writing yet? No. no. I'm just putting my ideas down. Everyone go like this. Say, ideas first. Ideas first. So we're having an opinion about the little girl. Everyone point to the third line and say, what's your opinion about the little girl? What's your opinion about the little girl? Say, what do you think or feel about her? What do you think you feel about her? What do we say about her? What is she? Scary cat. A scaredy cat. Let's go back and say the whole thing. Go. In my I opinion, the little, little girl is frightened of many things. things. In my opinion, the little girl is a scaredy cat. Turn your buddy and say your opinion sentence. In my opinion, the little girl. Okay, so let me get this back. So we have our step one, the opinion with our kids. And now we're going to go to step two. So in step two, now that we know that Julius has bad manners, what do we need? We need a reason and a reason and a reason to back up our opinion. So here's our, our helper sheet right here what we're going to ask our opinion to get all three reasons. Now, one of the things that you could add on to this, if you want to expand your reasons, then you ask, what else? You ask why or how? That's what you're going to do when you expand. So first you identify the reasons, then you can expand on them. Um, and you have to figure out which one of those would make the most sense. All right, so let me get rid of that actually because I know I'm gonna go to the next page, but what else, why or how to expand? All right, so now we're gonna go to our first reason. So I put a line across, I put a straight line here. And if you were with me last time, you're gonna to start to see, wow, this is very similar to the other organizer. And that's what we want everything to be very similar just the differences make it its own unique type of writing. So we're going to ask our question, what is the first reason why, and then I go back up to the opinion, what is the first reason why Julius has bad manners? So then I could have um, the kids go through their anthology. This actually is a story that used to be an anthology uh, from a district that I was training. Um, so the kids would have their anthology open and they would have flipped through to find different places where Julius was um, had has bad manners. And then I would um, ask that question. I'd have the kids turn to each other, talk about where he had bad manners. Then I would pick a stick and someone would tell me um, where he had bad manners in the story. But we would do it where they would say something like, please go to page 57, you know, and we would all turn to it. We would find the page and we would find what Julius was doing on that page through the picture or the text to show that he has bad manners. So in this particular case, 
um, from a lesson that I had done with the kids, one of the first ones that they said was that he, that he um, ran through the garden and it was just awful. The parents were so mad. So I'm going to ask them, well, what should I draw? I'll just draw a pig going through the garden. He's running through the garden. So here he is running through and all the flowers, everything are getting smushed. So who are, what are we talking about in this sentence? So now I want to start forming a sentence for this reason. So I'm asking the subject question. Who or what are we talking about? Julius. Woo, woo, woo. Redundant, please. Redundant, please. Good writers are not going to keep saying Julius, Julius, Julius. You don't want to keep saying the same important words repeatedly. So Julius is a boy. So what word are we going to use? He. So he. And then what about Julius? What did he do? He ran, he runs through, so he has bad manners because he runs through the garden. Okay, so he runs through the garden. Hmm, let's take the word runs because when I choose words, I choose words so that my readers see, feel, and think how I want them to see, feel, and think. So words should make you see, feel, and think. This is how you choose words that are best, the best words for your writing. So if I said, said that he runs through the garden, okay, I can see a pig running. But what if I said that he tramples through the garden? Which one will make me see, feel, and think um, for what Julius is doing that matches the story best where he has bad manners? tramples. So if kids aren't sure what that means, then I'm going to go like this. Here's runs. Here's tramples. Like I crush everything in the way. Which one matches in my story, in my um, opinion, tramples. So I'm going to put tramples here. He tramples through the garden and I could leave it there. But what if I want to expand on this reason Then I could ask, what else, how, or why? I think I'm going to ask why. And I'm always thinking about up here, the opinion. So if he tramples through the garden, why is that bad manners? Why? Oh, because all the flowers were ruined. They got crushed. Okay. So that's a good reason why they're bad. That's bad manners. So let's show like a flower that's been crushed, just destroyed. So now we could say, um, what happened to the flowers? And let's say I have a child who says, oh, he breaks the flowers. So now let's work on how do we help kids have more precise language? So I could say, hmm, break. Break is when you take something and it's going to separate at least in two pieces. Like I might break a glass, but if I destroy something, it can't be repaired. A glass, I may be able to put it together, but if I destroy something, it can't be prepared. Could these flowers come back that he trampled? No. So which one matches best? Destroys. Let's use destroys. Okay, so he destroys um, or he tramples through the garden and destroys all the flowers. Excellent. Hmm, you know what? Flowers are very important because we want to show how wonderful they are in this sentence. So let's get out our salt and pepper shaker. And when we add salt and pepper to our food, what does it do? Give it more spice. Let's add some spice to our writing. Add fancy words. So let's go over to flowers and let's ask the adjective question of the noun flowers. What kind of flowers did he destroy in the garden? So now I could say, that they were red, they were green. But what if I said that they were delicate? Ooh, that makes it even worse that he destroyed them. Let's say delicate. And then what else? Colorful. Oh my gosh, colorful. Yes, because they're so beautiful. So we have delicate, colorful flowers. So we're going to put a few ideas there. And why did we use the, why did we describe the flower? Because it's so important to show his bad manners. We want to make that even come alive more. All right, so we have that information there. He tramples through the garden and destroys all the delicate, colorful flowers. Excellent. Now we're done with that reason. We'll come back and put our starter word there, but we want to record all our reasons first. So we have our second reason. So what are we going to do? What is the second reason why 
Julius has bad manners. So the kids can flip through the book again, find something, I pick a stick, and someone tells me about, oh, he slurps all the coffee and he eats all the peanut butter in the house and they don't have anything to eat. Okay, so let's see, what would I draw a picture of? Maybe I draw a picture of Julius and here he is with his big tongue out slurping all the coffee. Oh, that Julius, I don't know what to say about him. And then he devours all the peanut butter. So maybe I'll just put PB here for pe peanut butter, okay? Now, let's go back and we have, in my opinion, Julius has bad manners for many reasons. He tramples through the garden and, um, and destroys delicate, colorful flowers. Um, I could put he here again, or I could use a synonym, or I could use Julius because I used Julius up here. Maybe I'll use a synonym. He's a pig, but he's a naughty pig. Maybe I'll say naughty pig instead of he. And that's still, who's the naughty pig? Julius. So that naughty pig, what does he do? He slurps all the coffee. Ooh, that's a powerful verb. Let's put slurps. He, and where'd we get that word? From the book. He slurps all the coffee and he eats all the peanut butter. Hey, do you want to kick that up a notch? Eat? Let's do it. Eat devoured. So eat could be this. Devoured is this. Oh, which one would match that naughty pig Julius? Devours. So he devours all the peanut butter. Now I could just leave it at that or I could expand and maybe I'm going to ask, well, why does that show bad manners if he eats, if he eats all the peanut butter and slurps all the coffee? So notice my question is, asking why is it bad manners, and then I'm using the evidence there. So the questioning is so much easier for kids to answer when we include all those parts in it. So why is that? Well, because there's never enough food in the house. Where did I get that? From the book, they told us there was never enough food in the house. So we're going to put food in a little house here, and maybe we'll cross it out to remember that idea. And you know what? Let's put the word so here because that's what, how we're going to finish up that sentence. We're gonna add on that why part and start it off with so. So there's never enough food in the house. Oh, that sounds great. All right, we need one more reason. What is the third reason why Julius has bad manners? Let's draw our reason line, our box, our starter word. And now we're gonna go back to the book. I pick a stick where someone tells me something they found. And this was a good one. He would dance, play loud music and dance around the house when everyone was trying to read that Julius. So I could write some words or draw a picture of it. I'm just going to draw a picture of my idea. So maybe some music here. And he's dancing around the house. That's my pig dancing. It's kind of scary. So he's playing that music. What would be a great way to describe the music, though, if, it, if people are trying to read loud music? So he played loud music, and maybe I'll put loud music there. And he danced all around the room, and he dances around the room while everybody else is trying to read. So I'm going to put the rest of the family trying to read. Maybe we'll have the, they're very upset. All right. So let's go back. In my opinion, Julius has bad manners for many reasons. Reasons, he tramples through the garden and destroys all the delicate co uh, colorful flowers. That naughty pig slurps the coffee and devours all the peanut butter. So there's hardly ever any food in the house. He, yeah, let's use he, cause we used it up there so we can use it here. He plays loud music and dances all around the room when everyone, when everybody else is trying to read. Those are great reasons why he's a naughty pig. Now let's finish up these reasons by adding starter words, our transition words. So let's look at our transitions. This box we can choose for the first one, the middle one, and then this is for the last reason, okay? And again, I start off with just a few and then I keep adding transitions, but I like to start off and keep it simple, okay? So maybe we start with to begin. So in my opinion, Julius has bad manners for many reasons. To begin, he tramples through the garden and destroys all the delicate flowers. 
Um, also next additionally, also, also that naughty pig slurps all the coffee and or slurps coffee and devours all the peanut butter. So there's hardly any food left in the house. And then how about we say last, last, he plays loud music and dances around the room while everybody else is trying to read. Those are great reasons to prove that he has bad manners. Okay, so we've gone through that. Let's watch and see what this looks like with the kids. So what I want you to see is, and this is why I chose this video, is because sometimes kids will say the same answer that someone else said. Sometimes kids don't know how to answer a question. So I want you to see how I'll give two choices to kids often um, and, uh, and just kind of watch some of the things that uh, to help them through this process, okay? So let's watch the reasons. We have our opinion. Everyone go like this, say, now we need reasons. Reasons. To back up our opinion. And what are we going to have? Reasons why she is a scared. One quick time through the book. Just see places where maybe she was a scaredy cat. If you see where she was a scaredy cat, just give your thumbs up. Don't do anything else. Don't say anything. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. yes. All right. Turn to your buddy and tell them one reason why she's a scaredy cat. Ready? Set? Go. Really quickly. She's Away from the cow. Give me one reason why she's a scaredy cat. She's scared of um, thunder. She's scared of thunder? All right, get up here. Let's see if he can show where she was scared of thunder. Hmm, look at him take the book like he knows what's going on. Everyone give him an excuse me. Ready, go. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh my gosh, is he right? Yes. Okay, now, you're going to have to tell me something. I am not going to have to write everything out right now. I'm just going to draw a real quick picture. So she said she was scared of thunder. So I'm going to put lightning here with the cloud shaking. Is that okay? Now, she's scared of the sound of thunder. Why? How do you know that she was scared of thunder? What did she do? She went under the bed. Does that prove she's scared of thunder? Yes. Yeah. How do I go? Good one. Go sit down, Smarty. All right, so I'll put her under the bed. Do you see that? Should I just put her feet there? Like you just see her feet? Yeah. Yeah, there's the bed. Okay, guys, let's put our starter to this. We could either have, everyone read it with me. Ready? To begin, to start, or first. My friend came up with it, so which one do you want to start your opinion with? To begin, to start, or first? First. Okay, so we're going to put it up here. And now, let's read our paper. Sitting up nice and tall, let's say it really loudly. Ready, guys, go. In my opinion, the little girl is a scaredy cat. First, she she's afraid of thunder. She hid so she Oh my goodness. So she hid under the bed. Did you guys see how we put the drawings up there and then we just made the sentence? It was easy then, wasn't it? All right, everyone go, I need another reason. I need another reason. Why she's a? Scary cat. Change your buddy really quickly. I'll choose someone. One minute, go. Go ahead, tell us where she was a scary cat. Um, in the barn? What happened in the barn that made her scared? What was she afraid of? The thunder. She was afraid of the thunder in the barn? Come on up. Here she is in the barn. What was she afraid of in the barn? Was she afraid of the hay, the goat, or the cow? Cow. Tell me what I should draw here then. Little girl afraid of the cow? So should I go like this? Like, why was she afraid of the cow? What made her afraid? Milk was next. Milk from kick cow. As grandma milked her, kick cow turned and looked mean right at me. I was scared she looked so big. What should I put here? What happened that made her scared? She looked What should I do? Did she look tiny and small? Was she smiling? Or did she frown and look big? She frowned and looked big? 
Ooh, so maybe I'll make that mean face and then I'll put big here. Everyone go, start a word. Start a word. For this reason, let's add also, next, or additionally. Which way do you want to start it? The first. So here's our first reason. Now, for our second reason, we're going to start this sentence with also, next, or additionally. Which way do you want to start it? Next. Next. Everyone say, great job. Great job. Go sit down, smarty. All right, are you ready? <laughs> say it nice and loudly. Go. In my opinion. Can you guys see something right now? I didn't even say anything. You're just like, in my opinion, love it. Do it again. In my opinion, the little girl is a scary cat. First, she was Oh my gosh, one more reason. Do you think you have it? Yes! Um, in the cabin. In the cabin? Where was that? Show me where that was. Why was she frightened of the cabin? Because it was dark. Is he right? Yes! yes. Look at our friend and go, ooh. ooh. All right, do not leave. You are going to be the teacher right now. <laughs> what do I draw a picture of? Everyone go, ideas first. Ideas, ideas first. first. All right. What, for, what, what am I going to put there for a reason? What am I going to draw a picture of? Annette. What is she afraid the of? What? The girl? girl. She's and smiling or scared? Scared. Okay. And then, what else am I going to draw? <laughs> what was she afraid of? The darkness. The darkness of the what? The dark, oh, I love how you said that. The darkness of the, the cabin. The cabin. Does that sound good, guys? Yeah. Everyone go, the darkness of the cabin. The darkness of the cabin. I love that. Okay, hold on. Everyone go, starter words. Starter words. Let's read them together. Ready, guys? Go. Finally, last, in the end. Which one do you want? All right, let's give our friend a ooh. Go. Ooh. Go sit down, smarty. All right, here we go. Are we ready? Yes. Sit up tall. I'm not going to help. See if you can do it. Ready, set, go. Okay, let me put that back up. All right, so we have our reasons, 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 our opinion, reasons, 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 and now we're heading to our conclusion. Repeat that opinion, but use different words. So I'm going to get out my in here, and I have my secret formula, T-S-O. So we're going to look at some of our transitions here. And again, there's so many other transitions you can use. We're just going to start with a few. Well, and actually four this way. Um, how about we do, all in all, to sum up in conclusion, on the whole, um, let's do on the whole. And then who or what is our opinion about well, I haven't said Julius since the beginning, so I'm going to use Julius here. And then opinion. I need to say the opinion in different words. Bad manners. What's another way to say bad manners? So maybe I could say if you have bad manners, you're impolite, you're rude. So I might say he's an impolite, rude pig. All right. So now we have all of our um, parts of our opinion and we're ready for editing time. And I'm going to take out my red pen 
and I always had the kids, I go, I'm taking out my red pen, not the red pen. Yes, the red pen. And we go through and when I'm first doing this with the kids, when they don't have the organizer, then they do body movements, capital, they do their hip, comma, and they stomp their foot for the um, periods or the stop. So we go through and we put all of our red markings on here so that when we go through and we're reading and we're writing, we have already planned out where our capitals, where our stops go um, for all of our sentences. And I'll tell you that makes so much, that teaches children so much about um, grammar, mechanics, about um, you know, the capitalization rules, uh, the punctuation rules. It really is a, a very powerful technique. They orally say it. And then after they do that, let me go to the next page. They're ready to write it down. So they start writing. One of the things that happens when kids write is many times their motor um, has muscle memory that has started at the margin for so many years in kindergarten and first grade that they have a hard time remembering to indent. So one of the things that you can do is just put a little box there so that they automatically indent um, and don't do it wrong so that after a while they don't need that box there you're retraining their muscle memory to indent they go through they write it out when they finish writing it out they can go back and trace over all the capitals and commas periods in red and count how many capitals did i have my organizer how many do i have on my written page if it doesn't match then i can go sentence by sentence to fix it your title for an opinion could be whoever, who, or what the opinion is about, or just what the opinion is, like who or what could be Julius. It could be what the opinion is, bad manners, or it could be the combination, Julius and bad manners, um, or it could be something clever. So um, one naughty pig, you know, something like that. And when you have a title, what do you do? Capitalize the first word, capitalize the last word and all the important words in a title. So then when we write it out, we remind the kids as we do that. So I'm going to show you the end of the video because we're getting kind of near the end here. So I wanna make sure that we get to see the kids doing the conclusion in the classroom. So let me go ahead and just take this page off here while I do the conclusion. Last part. What is this? The C. Collusion. Repeat that opinion. Repeat that opinion. But use different words. But use different words. How many lines did I have? <laughs> three. How many then if I'm having my conclusion do I need? Two or three? Three. Three. So now I have to repeat what I said up here. Can I say in my opinion or do I need different words? Different words. So we're going to show our different words. We'll choose. Let's go up here, the little girl. What's another way that I could say little girl? Could I say the little girl or she? she. Let's put she there. And then was a scaredy cat. What's another way to say scaredy cat? Scared. Scared. Afraid. Scared, afraid. Ooh, let's put afraid of just one thing or many things? Many things. Many things. So I'm just gonna put like, like a lot of checks. Like, wow, she was afraid of many things. Is that okay? Say all in all. All in all. In conclusion. In conclusion. To sum up. To sum up. On the whole. On the whole. Which one do you want, Danny? Um, on the whole. Ooh, that sounds good. Everyone say that sounds good. That sounds good. Everyone say on the whole. On the whole. She was afraid of everything. She was afraid of everything. All right, go take a seat. Look at that conclusion. Everyone go. Conclusion. Conclusion. Thanks, Danny. Thanks, Danny. There you go. All right, my friends. We are now going to say it one more time. Put your hands on your side. Give me the adult look. Ready? All right. Let's say it nicely. Clear voices. I'm just going to point, and I'm going to have you do it. I love how you're just like looking like this, like you know it so quickly. Ready? Go. In my opinion. Say it a little faster. Ready? Go. In my opinion, the little girl is a scary cat.
going to put up my red pen and everyone go like this, say, punctuation time. Punctuation time! Now stand up in your seat and push in your chair because you have to be my punctuation friends. I'm starting my sentence. What do I need? Yeah, All right, I'll put a red there so I remember. In my opinion. Ooh. Ready, go. Mama. Say it with me fast now. In my opinion, the little girl is a Oh, I see it. Give it to me. All right, I'll put the period. Me. Me period. period. Give it to me here. In the end, what do I need here? Give it to me. Mama. She was afraid of the darkness of the cabin. Period. I love it. Look at these kids going on. What am I doing here? Oh, I love it. On the whole, what do I need here? Comma. She is afraid of everything. What do I need? Period. If you can say it, I'm going to say start writing. Are you ready? Give me the you can say it look. I'm going to give it back to you. We'll see. Love that look. You're like, Psh, we'll see. Are you ready? <laughs> say it nice and loudly. Read the opinion. Go. In my opinion, a little girl was a scary cat. First, she was afraid of Sit down, start writing. Wow, look how people have their pencil in their hands and they're already writing. Look how they're looking on the board and talking as they write. These kids' backs are here, and look how they're already just turning their desks, their seats, so they can talk and write. What's your name? Right here, he's talking and writing, and the words are getting on the page. I love it. I want to hear you talking and writing as you write. Keep going. Go write it. Keep going. Look up at the board. Make sure you're looking up there for the ideas. Now say it fast. Go. In my opinion. Okay. And then just to show you a couple more things before we end is just um, on the following pages. I have some organizers that you could use. Um, you know, here's your opinion statement. Here's your three reasons. You have the transitions and the boxes and your conclusion and writing lines. If you wanna do that, I'm a real big fan of using blank paper, but it's there for you if you wanna start off with that. There's also one where you can have the author and the title if you're doing an individual book. Um, I used to do this where, and the reason why I had the organizer was so that it was like a book report when kids did a listening post and then they use this afterwards. So you had your author title, the typical opinion, three reasons, down here was your conclusion, but then it ended with kind of a snappy ending, like this book is or book, this book will. So that's what's on the next page here. This book is, if I like the book, then superb, breathtaking, brilliant. If I didn't, second rate, a snoozer, lackluster. Or this book will, if I liked it, make your side splits, split, make you, um, turn you into a brainiac, inspire you to be creative. Or if I didn't like it, put you to sleep, give you a headache, you know, that type of thing. So it's a fun little way to end um, that type of book report. And there's those black line masters and some line paper. Okay, so there are, there's all of our, um, uh, uh, steps and um, different tools for you to use. And I'm going to put this back on here. And Jeannie, do you have any questions? Um, there was one question and I have one question. Um, okay. um, are there any modifications or changes uh, in approach to a third grade lesson? Yes. So in the third grade lesson, what you start having is we start calling it when we go, I have an opinion. Now I need evidence and expand it evidence and expand it, evidence and expand it to back up my opinion, conclusion, repeat that opinion, but use different words. So now we're going to have evidence and we're going to be citing the evidence on these first lines. So you're gonna see things like in source one, you know, also in source two, that type of thing. So our transitions start to change 
to cite um, so the kids start learning the citation process. And that's real important so that when they finally get to fourth grade, they're starting to look at direct quotes and paraphrasing. Well, and I think as a seventh grade ELA teacher, if, if kids came into ELA knowing how to use quotation marks and cite Evans, that would be pretty powerful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so that's great. I'm, I'm actually personally curious about the kid that has a hard time with spacing between words. How do you how do you direct that? OK, um, so um, I do different things like, for instance, um, when kids are writing, let's say they're going to be writing the word the and they write it like this. I always take their name. Here's your name, John. And here's your name, John. How are you supposed to write your name? Let's make your name come alive. Come alive. And then I have John's name come alive and go, hey, this is my name, John. And these are all the letters of my name. And they're like my family. They're not supposed to be far away. They're supposed to be snuggled up. Snuggle them up. Snuggle them up. Oh, my gosh. Your name gets mad, John, if you don't have those letters snuggled up. Let's snuggle them up right now. So then we snuggle up the letters right what about in between words okay so now well let me let me show you um okay. when it comes to in between words what happens is this so now they know about snuggling it up so now they're writing and john is writing like this so let's say he has john is and well actually let's say he's writing up here something like the dog ran right so let's just put something simple and he write and he's starting to write dog just like that right mm -hmm. so I go back down and I use his name so look right here I'm going to write John is nice and John is nice how is it supposed to look and I've had kids point to either one it doesn't matter I always erase the correct one and then I go let's go back to your name and let's make your name come alive in this sentence. So come alive. And then I go over and I put a house around John. And I say, okay, here's your name, John. Remember, you're a family. It's like you live in a house and you're all snuggled together. Now let's make your name come alive. Come alive. And then he goes, hey, this is my name, John. You're not allowed to be in my house. What do you think you're doing in here is move over, move next door. Okay, okay, says is. So now he moves next door. So now he moves over here. Now, where is nice going to be? So watch what nice does. Nice goes over here because what do we, what do kids do? They don't write all the way on a line. So what does is say? Hey, there's plenty of room on this street. Get back up here. So what's another thing? Kids overgeneralize. They have too many space. Their spaces are too wide. So I have nice go way over here. And then he says, get back here. You're my next door neighbor. You're not just living on this street. You're my next door neighbor. Okay, okay. And then you have kids who do floaters, who just words float in the air. So then I have him come back, but he's floating. So then Nice says, you're a house. You're not allowed to be up in the air. You're supposed to be over here on the street. Get down here right now. So then we do that. And we put his name. I mean, we put Nice next door on the line. Now, when kids are writing, as they're writing, I'm going to say, like John, and then he's going to say, oh, my next word is is, and then I'm going to go in your brain, you're supposed to say snuggled or next door. And right away, John is next door, and then is nice, snuggled or next door, next door. Um, the problem when, and it's fine to do two fingers and things, but what happens with two fingers is, is that kids end up doing this weird thing with their body and everything. Mm -hmm. And really, they should visually be able to move from one space to the next. It should just be, it should make sense to them. So um, that's why I like to do it that way. But the big thing is, is before they write it, they say next door, and then they start writing. And then after a while, they don't need to do that anymore. And that's through the dictation process when they're first learning how to write a sentence, I do that. So when they're writing a word, they're writing the first letter in, I don't know, is, they write I, and when they go to write the S, um, I'm going to say snuggled up or next door, snuggled up, and then they write it down. And I even color code my alphabet with uh, capitals and lowercase. So right away I go green or red, green. We always write the greens unless we know the rule. The reds are the rule letters. And then, they're, uh, and then we call them uppercase, lowercase letters, just like that. I, I notice a lot of kids too that don't use the margins to begin a sentence. They might go all the way in the middle of a sentence rather than going to their margins. Okay, so if they do that, then one of the things that you can do is this. 
and say, this is where we're always going to where your sentence starts here. That's like green light. That's where your sentence starts. And you can even do this. So then you just, they have that visual right there. So they always know I have to start there and move. And in saying something like, when I get to the end, what am I doing? I'm going to the green line. And then I start writing. I'm going to the green line and I'm starting right to write. Okay, one last question, and it has to do a lot with, um, you know, your your resources and your tools. Maybe perhaps you could just quick share your website, like um, your background as far as your curriculum. So the question is, you know, what is your background and uh, regarding your curriculum? Um, yeah. So um, first of all, my background is I've taught almost every grade level, but I started teaching in special day class. So I was a special education teacher for upper grade and primary grades for many years. And then I moved to general ed and the school that I was at was the only school that I was at. And I was there for about 12 years. And it was a school that had 16 different languages and it had 98% poverty. So um, it really required uh, explicit direct instruction, lots of language development and um, through that process, I just read tons of research. And let me tell you something, when I started doing this, it was in the mid eighties and some of the research out there was pretty good. And then there was some research that just didn't make sense at all. Um, and that's when I started getting really frustrated because I always felt like they're saying this is research but it doesn't work, you know? So um, I'm very much, uh, I was always reading, reading, reading what the research would say, but then I would look at how does that look in the classroom? And how can I take all this different research and pull it together so that it's actually a process that we're going through when we're teaching? It's not little isolated items. Mm -hmm. We're walking through it in a direct instruction way. So um, that's what I did for many years. And then in about 1998, my school that I was at with our demographics, we always had real low test scores. And then when I started working there, all the teachers started embracing my strategies. So we started working using my strategies school-wide and we ended up becoming a national title one school, high achieving school. Um, we even had the Sierra project come and study us because they couldn't believe how well we scored with our demographics. And then that's how I started doing what I do because schools would come. We actually had to have a visiting day once a month because we'd have like two or 300 visitors. I kid you not. And they would walk through our classrooms and they would start asking me, can you come and train our school? And I'm like, well, what do you mean train your school? I work here. So, and then I just started doing it. That's so awesome. That's my, I know it's late little... or past time. One quick question. Um, how much writing is appropriate for a kindergarten? Um, sentence, paragraph, um, in first grade. What's, what's okay. Going? So when you're looking at those two grade levels, always look at them as you are doing two different things. You are teaching transcription skills and then you are teaching the writing process. So what I'm showing you is the writing process. I'm showing you narrative, opinion, or informative explanatory writing. And the steps that you go through to plan your stories, record your ideas, anybody could do that. They could put pictures down, orally say it after a while, whether you're kinder, first, second, third, whatever. Um, but writing it down, those are transcription skills. So I may at the beginning of the year, we start off where we do a lot of just the oral language piece with this, but we're doing dictation. So we're doing words, learning how to write words, and then going to sentences. I cannot expect kids. I don't know why we have, and this drives me crazy. I'm sorry, I'm going to get up on my little soapbox right now, but it drives me crazy when I see districts having kindergartners asked to write a story. It is absolutely insane. They should be separating this out. Can they plan a story? Can they tell a story? But then what are they doing in their trans transcription skills? Do they know their alphabet? Do they know their sounds? Where's their phonemic awareness? Can they write down words? How are they writing down their words? Where are they with their sentences? Do they understand how to write a sentence? And that should be the conversation because we will truly teach the foundation skills for all our students. But when teachers are given up, we want them to write it out as their goal. Um, that's just 
you know, that that's just not going to happen. Then we're going to have everybody writing. I see the, you know, all the kindergartners are writing. I see the, and then they have either scribble or something here. They know how to memorize these and write it down. And then they put something there. Sometimes it might be okay. Sometimes you don't even know what they wrote. And that's all they write is I see the, or whatever frame that we give them writing. The writing process should not be teaching frames. It should be teaching you the language, how to organize, put together all these ideas. This is where, and my favorite thing to do with words and sentences and all this is teach it during reading because now I don't have to have separate spelling groups. I don't have to have any of that. My transcription is here's my decodable books. I'm teaching my alphabet. I'm going to my decodable books, starting off with your CVC words. Well, guess what we're writing? Guess what we're spelling? The same CVC words. We're going to write sentences. What sentences? Sentences that the decodable books already give you sentences with the sight words and the CDC words. And then as you move up the decoding um, level of, of words, those sentences in the decodable books give you great dictation sentences for your kids to transcribe. So that as you're moving up the levels of phonics, you're matching that with your spelling. Mm -hmm. And if you're spelling words that you're decoding, guess what you become? A better decoder and also a better speller. 